Hey folks, welcome back to Endless Ocean Blue World. I'll see you not fuck up something this time. <laughs> hey, I found a dog. That's yeah? a good thing. Isn't that right, Hulkamad? Uh, you kind of pissed me off, too. I'm sorry I ruined your baseball game. You <laughs> <laughs> really Bear grills that one the fuck up. Well, at least we got a dog, and as you know, there's nothing faster than a dog, and there's nothing better than a dog. I know, I shouldn't have any issue getting all these fish healed with a dog helping me. That's right! I know, there's nothing more useful than a dog. What about a dog with, like, a utility belt? <laughs> Where'd you put the dog? I don't care about the bluebird. Point me to dog. Well, now you don't care about the bluebird. Oh, customer. Hey, hang ten, dudes! I'm pretty sure that's a lady. Oh, whoops. I think everybody has the same jet ski. They're renting them from the same person. T7. It, it matches her wetsuit, though, so... I've been looking for this blue bird! Have you seen it? Is it a specific <laughs> blue bird, or...? Is it a blue jay? Does he owe you money? Maybe? You don't mean that bird that we found, huh? <laughs> Even if it isn't, let's say it is. There might be money in this. How did you track that bird here? How did you find out we knew about the bird? <laughs> There's plenty of blue birds around in the world. <laughs> well, not necessarily in the Pacific, though, Hulkamad. Blue the blue bird's native to North America. Yep. Y yeah, but th what are the odds of this being the one bird that she's looking for? Look, it's a talking bird. I, uh, maybe. Right. I don't know. Okay. It it's a telekinetic bird? Maybe tell maybe maybe a telepathic bird. Either that or we're insane. No, or we, she is. Or we're commu she, or it may be that Nadine is communing with the bird. I don't well, know. Oceana didn't hear it. Yeah, so maybe Nadine is communing with the bird. Ah, bird talker. <laughs> the bird whisperer. <laughs> so congratulations, this is one of the side quests in this game. It's hunt down the bird's landing spots. And as you find it, you'll get items and it'll usually lead you to rare animals, so. And we already know where the uh, next place is, because he told us. It's uh, Triton Cove. Which well, is, that could be. As you would think, you know? There's, there's limited places where a Triton Cove would be located. Triton Cove. Hello. Got that thumb up. And I don't plan to ever meet that thing. We again. see you picking your nose. You, you, <laughs> you're hearing voices, you say. Well, that sounds plausible to me, as a young girl. <laughs> You've convinced I'm me! A, I'm a young teenage girl without much knowledge of the world. This sounds highly convincing. I live on an <laughs> island. I am pumped for shit. Dog! Dog. <laughs> yes, I remember that dog! Yes, How can I just forget? Got it. Gotcha. Ah, dog. But she was with me this entire time. Me and Ocean have agreed we think you're responsible enough for a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, boss. You're not my real dad. You handled that little zappy gun pretty good, so here is a living thing. Please don't kill it. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's so many names we can think of. Oh, it's Ocean gets to name it. Like Blizzard. <laughs> no! You goddamn... Oh, Alright. Uh, I'll take some uncle. I was getting ready to yell at her, but that's and you Look at that dog's face. You can't be mad. No. Ah. Dog ah. mode activate. Activate the dog. Pet. Oh, yes! is a petting minigame? <laughs> it's not so much a petting minigame. It's a... There is a button to pet dog. Pet him. <laughs> and you can just kind of leave it on here like the entire day. Yeah, you don't have to. to. You can just waste away day because time does move while you're petting dog. <laughs> Gotta so build up that if Zorak wanted to, he could record a whole day just going by, just nothing petting dog. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Love that dog. But yes, Snorkel will be hanging out with us for a while. He's a new member of our uh, wonderful friends. Ah, yes. Of L and L Diving Service. And uh, seeing as all that blue bird gave us some gear, let's let's look at what we can do with our gear here. We can customize stuff. Yeah, we can. Now, normally, we'll, we'll occasionally actually get items from quests, but we can also buy them. Also, sometimes birds drop them. Yeah, sometimes birds do drop them. Which is And weird. you can find them in mysterious places. 
Thus far, all we do is all we have is a glove and our basic gear, and we can change the color of our wetsuit. So. Awesome. If you click that little color thing, you can actually customize the color of your basic wetsuit. Right. Need ass things. Yep. We'll, we'll hold off until we have some other gear that matches better. Make I it think we're going to be getting some pretty neat gear. <laughs> By the end of the game, we're going to be getting... Especially towards end game. Oh god, we're going to be getting some silly gear. <laughs> really? Oh, I've got his two words oh. for you, Hulkamat. Yeah? Hanzo Steel. What? <laughs> Uh, let's oh, go play this? with Mandelbrot a bit. It's Mandelbrot. Mandelbrot. Our good right. friend Mandelbrot. I love you, Mandelbrot. You taught me so much about fractals. <laughs> so much better than Skippy. He is. He really is. For one, he knows a lot about math. Yes. <laughs> Skippy didn't know shit about math. Oh, new! Now, a funny thing about these dolphins... <coughs> excuse me. Is that they all have a move that they particularly like. And, as I remember, if I remember correctly, that uh, Mandelbrot's favorite move is, in fact, singing. Oh. Fucking loves that shit. Is it? I thought it was actually the jump flip. Actually, I think you're right, actually. You're right. A, a certain animal known for singing actually prefers singing a lot. Oh, that's right, yeah. But he's pumped! He is ready to go! <laughs> Love that dolphin. Mandelbrot is excited about math and, like, circles and... Just go into town. You ain't just helping fish. Yeah, pretty much. Fish yourself up with that shit. <laughs> Give me the fish fries. <laughs> no! <laughs> I don't want I don't want to be more like kick 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 Hits you with a tail fin. Come on, yeah. Mandelbrot. <laughs> you can do better. Mandelbrot, you will set a record. Oh! You will set one record today. You're going against nothing. Well, There's no record to compete against. Oh, damn. Backflip. That, is... that can't be done. It's Smoking Oven Legend. <laughs> My god. Tony Hawk right here. New trick! Me, Nick. <laughs> so, Nick, don't stand up. It's... God. Done it. He's like, I'm gonna post this on my webpage. Yes. He doesn't... Thinks he does. Well, where do you think they advertise their service on? They totally have a web page. Yeah, and but I'm he doesn't sure... run it. Okay, yes, I'm sure Oshanna runs Oshana it. Oshanna tells like... him it's a web page, but it's a cork board stuck in the bathroom. It's like a GeoCities website. Look, Oceana loves the internet, okay? She does. Maybe Age will fire her. I bet she has a web page. Yes. And I bet him putting stuff on the web page is like him going, Oceana, hey, put this on the web page. <laughs> I'm updating my web page. I'm updating yeah. my webpage. Oceana, put this thing on the webpage. <laughs> Nineballwizard.org If you didn't give it a reward, we'd be pissed off. Yes. They do, uh, they will start to get annoyed with you. Uh. Yeah, if you don't, if you train them too much, or if you don't reward them, they'll get pissed off, and then they'll just, like, be mad at you and not train as well. They'll go into a bad mood, uh. yeah. And it's actually important to train your dolphins up in this game. I'm not going to say why quite yet. But it's important to have a well-trained dolphin. Ah, new record! A new record! You should be proud of yourself, Mandelbrot! For that backflip, not not any of your math things, just that backflip. Be proud of yourself. All right. I want a singing record. You will help me record my new album. <sighs> the last album didn't <laughs> sell. That's because you didn't put your heart into it. It's because you used shrimp as the backing track. Oh, but they're so rhythmic. <sighs> Maybe Mandelbrot's trying to tell you that there's manatees dying. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. It's like, we don't have time for this. Looks like somebody's getting a picture. Oh. Yeah. Alright, now get out of here. Mandelbrot's uh, our friend. Speaking of, of manatees, we probably should actually do something about that poor manatee. Maybe. Yeah, for real. Maybe. Uh, on the other hand, we could call Nancy. Or bring the dog with us. Uh, I say we Nancy. compromise and call the Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> call the Nancy to come look at our dog. Have you and seen then our we'll dog? We'll shoot Nancy. him with the zappy gun. This Sounds is the best plan. Normal. 
she's got a different jet ski. That's because she's actually a character. She's a cowboy girl. On a steel jet ski, she rides. Yeah, we found Wanted this shit in Greece. Dead or alive. <laughs> ah, another old piece of shit. <laughs> okay. Hey, Linear B. This thing's actually true, by the way. Really? True facts about a language. Extremely rare. Yay, we brought it away from Greece. Is that cool? We're allowed Yo, to do that, Yo, read this right? thing. I hear you've got the internet. Can you read this thing for us? <laughs> God bless the internet. Yeah, for real. <laughs> that's, a, that's actually a thing in this game that everybody's kind of like, man, the internet sure is wonderful. God, this shit's useful. A lot of cool things this on that internet. This game takes place in 1995. <laughs> yeah, that took me five seconds. I opened up Google. <laughs> Turns out they have uh, Linear B on uh, Google Translate. Who knew? Ah, even the whirling waters feel the night. Once again, I think it's wonderful that it just happens to rhyme in English. Look, she's kind of transposing a little bit. She's good at that. She's a Texan. She sat there for an extra ten minutes just trying to think of something to rhyme with Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> Coincidentally, I hear you need some night diving gear. Here, have, have this flashlight. Luckily for you, I'm on Team Jacob. Yay! <laughs> Okay. So, oh, the the useless uh, item. something that's entirely useless. It's only useful for uh, multiplayer things, and even then, it's completely useless. I will say it makes more sense in this game because it doesn't ionize photons and shit. It's just it's it's ink. This game is multiplayer. It, yes, you can actually join up with another person for a dive, just like my first game. That's we cool. might be showing it off later. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. By the campfire. I don't have enough money. I need to. I need to find things and sell things. See? Find treasure. I got nothing to sell. Wow. Ah, maybe we'll get something today. Maybe. Slacker. Later, Holmes. <laughs> ah, we got a flashlight. We can dive Yay. whenever we want. Hooray! That's a good idea, Shanna. Or we could go heal those sick animals that were already. Yeah, we should probably we should probably do that and not leave that undone. I, Maybe I we should to learn keep an eye on them before we get out of the water so they don't, you know, choke on something again immediately. Yeah, I guess we should go do that. Ah, <sighs> let's go do that. That thing that we said. John Luke is just he just thinks you already did it. John here. John. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not Jeez. the only one. <laughs> I'm sorry you guys got Picard on the brain. Oh, how can you not? It's true. <laughs> it's very true. Ah, and then the dog rides with! Oh, that's awesome! Bow riding dog. Maybe the dog can pull that fender in. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I love that the dog rides with. Maybe you can meet up a polar bear. Bring him on the boat. By the way, those six animals, you yeah, forgot to do anything they're, about they're them. still choking. Okay, we'll do it this time, for real. Yeah, it turns out uh, they're in the same exact spot. They may yeah. not be alive, though. Oh, look, he actually does tell you, don't get out of the fucking water, we're just dumb as, we're just dumb as hell. Yeah, we both kind of missed that. Uh, well, let's go do that. We, now that we know where they are, again, we, we shouldn't have any trouble here. Now with a good you, pace, we should... Yeah. You could have died from the new spot. It's a new dive area spot you could have dropped in at. Yeah, but it's in the middle of everything. That's not very useful for what we need to do. We need to hit this like a surgical action. A surgical strike upon sinking fish. You shoot and them with a zappy gun. <laughs> a surgical <laughs> strike, like fucking Sam Fisher. Yeah! Fist pump! I didn't even do that on purpose. Uh, God, I'm good. I know you did! Ah! I make shitty puns, even when I'm not trying. P.S. Now we can use the multi-sensor for salvaging. Yes, it's not just for quests anymore. We can actually what? salvage actual things to sell for fake internet money. Yeah. Points? Well, it's, 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 it's actual money. It's dollars, but... Oh, alright. <laughs> it's video game dollars. 
I'm pretty sure we've seen everything in these zoom spots, unfortunately, so they're just going to kind of sit here taunting us. Now, one thing about these zoom spots, actually, is that we're seeing a lot of zoom spots for a particular region. It's because Oceana's with us. She's very good at seeing out zoom spots. She fucking loves tiny cute animals. Yeah. Especially ones that happen to, you know, burrow into coral. Yep. So you'll see more zoom spots if you have Oceana with your giant partner. Hmm. It's actually an interesting thing in this game that the partner you choose and bring with you actually definitely helps and causes different things to happen while you're diving. So. Every partner has their own special thing, even Mandelbrot. Mandelbrot will help you find certain item types when you're salvaging. It's pretty neat. He loves balls. He's he a fucking ball fiend. He does, in fact, fiend. love round on items, so... He's a fucking ball fiend. Oh, there's your treasure. Oh, you know? oh yeah, I missed it. Get the treasure! Treasure? Now, I'm, I'm very bad at this right now. He is. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm out of focus. I'm kind of like, where is it? Turns out I'm, I'm floating right above it, so... It's actually, yeah, it's to your left. It's that sparkly thing. Yeah, I was missing it. We're there in it campfire is. Territory what here. an idiot. Let's dust it off a little bit, and... The rock, maybe. I don't know. Could be anything. Could be a gold nugget. Could be just rock. Could be a rock. Could be meteor. Maybe you get five thousand for that. All right, man. Man's a race. Gotta. Yeah. Heal that butterfly fish. He's critically hurt. Dorak, no. No. Pass Dorak. Uh, I didn't do bad. Uh. It's weird because you normally just heal. Fucking everything. I want to find things. I want to find things. It's a shiny ass fish there. I gotta find things. The thing is that we got the salvage, you know, we might as well salvage some things with our salvage jar. Your yellow tang. That's a fish we haven't seen before. The yellow oh. tang. You're yellow. You're yellow. Yellow pigs. Ah, <laughs> ah! Uh, uh. They're gonna fall. I now. see a sea lion. Yeah, you do. I don't First, see one. First, I gotta photograph these tang. That's more important. Camera tang. Ah. They're so beautiful. There you go. There. We had a fight for that information, but you know. You had to take a picture of that exact one, but all the other ones crowded your shot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the thing about the yellow tang is that they have uh, slightly protruding eyes, which allows them to go all crazy rotating. Oh, Shen is telling you about not pet rats. You got a fish on your mouth. That's another thing. Different dive partners will tell you different things about different fish. Because they each have they each have their own favorite things they like. So. Really. Apparently, Oceana really likes hump pet rats. I can't blame her. I really like hump pet rats. It's the reason, it's one of the first things I did a segment on, if not the very first, actually, I think, was it's the Humphead Rass. Is that of the Manta Ray? Yeah, I think it was actually the Manta oh, Ray. Those yellow tang are injured, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't what even heal that one all the way! Yeah, we gotta have a little patience. You don't just zap the yellow tang twice! You do it all or nothing! <laughs> <laughs> but California sea lions! What are they doing here? Eh, they're, in the, they're in the right ocean, at least. I guess. <laughs> More than we can say about the manatee, but... Actually, well, these dudes have segments, but section, or they have uh, additional information. But <laughs> it's another rebel shark. There. There's little crawly bits on the ground. Some uh, I think the manatees are up this way, so let's go get them. They were at Cake Rock, big fat fucks. Or was it Donut Reef? <laughs> it's You're at Cake uh, Rock yes. now. Yeah. Okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. Ooh, that's new. You found a mandarin fish. These little things are mean, and they basically have turf wars on coral. Do they attack anybody? They attack each other. Uh. They actually found a, a new family of these fish in a lake in, uh, I think it was Cambodia. And that's really rare to find an entire family. Hmm. There you go. Pretty cool. Yep. Quality information. What's that? Ah. It's going trouble. It's a fish. Good old math dog. <laughs> they actually, one of the things they do is they, when they're really tiny, they stick around large fish like groupers and sharks for protection. And 
that tends to work, except for when the groupers or sharks, you know, decide to eat them. Well, you, the thing is that usually they're when they're juveniles, they're too small even for you know sharks. So they're usually pretty safe in that regard. Yeah. Links represents a genus of cats by the same name. Johannes Hevelius defined the constellation in the 17th century to fill in a gap between Ursa Major and Origa. Supposedly, he named it Lynx after its faintness. Only the Lynx side would be able to recognize it. Pretty neat. What the hell was that guy? I have no idea. I think it was Tears. <laughs> also, the Lynx is, you know, it's a neat cat. Yep. Ah, Lynx, the placeholder constellation. <laughs> Manatees. Ah, that one waved at you. Yes. They're very friendly. Ride it. Ah, there you are, sick manatee. Yay! You should look at the manatee. I should probably actually touch one this time. Ah, the manatee. Still love that bite of West Indian manatee. Yep. That's the one in Florida. Now, because he turned his head, I didn't get his information. Ah. Around. Chase there him down. Go. Got him. Oh, he's the one you gotta poke anyway. Yay! Yay. <laughs> That's awesome. He is so relaxed. Ah, I saw one of these the other day. It was great. Ah. Actually, that was a thing I wanted to actually talk about in this episode, Red. Okay. Have you seen any cool fish recently? Uh, I saw a cutlass fish a couple weeks ago. That's pretty cool. Our good friend Hazo actually identified it for me, because I had no idea what it was. Ah, good old Hazo. He's a nice dude. Oh. I saw a coyote a couple weeks ago. That's not a fish, but it's a thing I saw. It, it, the coyotes are not, in fact, fish. Oh, too big. Throws it to the ground and smashes it. Ah, uh, yeah, so <laughs> unfortunately, you have to upgrade your bag. What? You, you have a tiny little ass bag, and you can't carry much. Nadine is not super swole yet. So, uh, until she gets used to carrying a lot of heavy shit underwater, she can't grab a lot of huge things. And we will be grabbing some really huge ass shit later. Does Oceana have a bag? No. Oh, no, she, she doesn't. doesn't. Hmm. Perhaps we'll be meeting someone later who will have a bag to help us. Yes. Wink. Which one are we looking for again? We're looking now for a uh, another sick hump headrass. The one we uh, saw earlier was not sick. It was just a hump headrass. I see. Flame Angelfish. Kind of cool. Flame Wars. They actually, if you use the food here, they all dart to it and start pecking at it. <laughs> Some animals have different reactions to food, and that's one of them. A turtle going to town for it? Oh, good God. <laughs> he was just kind of checking out, like, oh, what? Ah, no, you guys got it. All right, then. Thought it was a jellyfish. Turns out <sighs> it was. Thanks for noticing me. <laughs> you should have fed it. Ah. Uh, more Shido, what are you doing by this shrimp hole? Looking at it. Oh, it's Ooh. a jawfish! Well, that's different. It digs holes. Dun 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 and dun. And has dun, dun. really crazy jaws. Pretty neat. Yep. And that shark looks new, too. There are actually like five or six different fucking jawfish in the game. <laughs> so. Well, when they can when they can reuse the model and just change the textures, they they tend to go for it. Cause yeah. you know, why not? Why not? Might as well. Banded hound shark. That's pretty neat. Their genus name actually comes because their teeth they have three points on each tooth. So three point, it's talking about their teeth. They're actually in the same group as the leopard shark, which are cool and green looking. Ah, uh, where are you, Humphead Rass? Going to shallow You're water to find cover it. more ground. It's I know. I know where it is, but you you left it too long. It's dead. Oh Let's no! Go. No, I'll never complete this side quest. Oh! Nah, no, you'll be fine. Just get out of the water. <laughs> oh, <he's gone. laughs> That's how ecology works. <laughs> nope. Yeah, you're not killing me. Right there now. he is. He's over here. Those giant clams. Ah, <sighs> I'm still annoyed you can't focus on them. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I would like to focus on around here. Like sponges. 
Sponges are pretty cool, Red. Oh, okay. I enjoy a sponge. <sighs> Get healed! Ah, yes! <laughs> Mission That's accomplished. Nice. We did a good Plastic. deed today, gentlemen. Yes. That thing that we did. <laughs> thing that we failed what to do What are you doing? <laughs> I kept like, like you're, you're the menu. not sure what to do with that pulsar. Ah. <laughs> uh, well, we healed the fish, so that's a pretty good job, I think. There you go. We found more ocean paths. Yep. So next time, let's see if we can find Dracula's castle. What? Canis lupus familiaris, also known as the dog, is man's official best friend, one of the first domesticated animals and, officially, bro as fuck. Chances are, you are probably familiar with dogs. See what I did there. There's pretty good odds, in fact, that you currently own one or have owned one in the past. With around an estimated 400 million dogs worldwide in 2001, there are less than 18 humans per every dog. That's pretty high dog density. Given the size of our own family groups, chances are you've probably had some pretty deep dog contact. I've owned four dogs myself throughout my lifetime, and quite enjoyed it. But despite how common dogs are, there are actually a lot of very interesting and unusual things about dogs. The dog is, of course, the domesticated subspecies of Canis lupus, the gray wolf, which itself has a very wide global distribution. The earliest known domesticated canines that we are aware of are dated to have lived around 30,000 BC in Asia, though it's quite possible that domesticated dogs existed even earlier. It is thought to have been a gradual process. As humans became more developed and widespread, wolves began to scavenge at the edge of our camps. Over generations, those that were less prone towards fear and aggression with humans were better capable at scavenging from us, which in turn led towards our breeding and caretaking of wolves for ourselves. Domestication is simultaneously a very complex process and a very simple one. It's quite straightforward, really, when you break it down to its core elements. In fact, with canids, such as the dog, Soviet scientists were able to recreate canid domestication using Siberian gray foxes over several decades, until ultimately they had created foxes that were functionally indistinguishable from dogs in both temperament and propensity towards companion behavior. There are a few functional characteristics and processes that are important to domestication. An important one going in is the capacity towards rapid reproduction. If you are to domesticate an animal and intend to actively breed traits into them, reproductive times and maturity times should ideally be much less than our own. With canids, subsequent generations are very close. It only takes a few months before a dog is ready to get going. This rapid turnaround allows traits to be more closely observed than repeated. Additionally, the fact that dogs produce large litters mean that certain traits can be selected even fractionally in litters to use going forward. You can use a very small starting population and pick certain traits in that starting population over time through different litters until ultimately you can emphasize that very fractionally small trait more and more as time goes on. Probably the most important behavioral trait in domestication is the behavioral characteristic known as flight distance. The flight distance of an animal is how close an animal will allow humans, or anything else it perceives as dangerous, to approach before it runs away. With the domestication of wolves, the wolves most likely to stick around and get in close to humans were the wolves most likely to take advantage of us for our scraps and pass those traits down to subsequent generations. With the controlled domestication of foxes in Russia, scientists observed in adults which individuals possess smaller flight distances, then bred them over the generations to biologically emphasize such behavior. This reduced flight distance had a very strong correlation with reduced aggression. Of course, this is not the exact same thing as total removal of aggression in canids. However, you can breed reduced aggression alongside reduced flight distances. The key thing with reduced flight distances, in a modern sense, is that it's actually a very easily determined and observed trait that coincides with 
attack-produced aggression. You can measure it. Plus, wolves that were less aggressive towards humans in the wild were able to, yet again, get more from us, improving their own survival. And of course, as these proto-dogs became less aggressive towards humans, we were able to start breeding them on our own and start adopting them into human groups. Very interestingly, while emphasizing these behavioral traits, we've noticed that there's a resultant effect on the domesticated animal's physical traits. And this is something we see in essentially all domesticated animals. They display neoteny compared to their wild equivalents. Neoteny, sometimes referred to as juvenilization, is the physiological retardation of an animal's development. In other words, they possess traits as adults that are in line with the juvenile traits of their genders. So, in layman's terms, a dog is a lot like a wolf puppy in terms of physical characteristics, even in adulthood. These physical traits seem to go hand in hand with reduced aggression and flight distances. Both dogs and domesticated foxes have things such as shorter and broader muzzles, floppy ears, curly tails, piebald colorations, so on, which are all characteristics of juvenile wolves and juvenile wild foxes. And we see these characteristics in essentially all domesticated animals. Perhaps most jarringly seen in the domesticated cow, which we derive from the extinct auroch, which were horrendous murder cattle that were much larger, much meaner, and holy fucking shit. Of all of our domesticated animals, however, the dog is unique in the sheer range of genetic variation that we see in the different breeds, produced largely over the last few centuries. Completely dynamically different and completely just utterly unlike morphological and behavioral variations are spread across absolutely hundreds of breeds worldwide. On one hand, you can have a massive Great Dane. Ideally not on your hand, actually, since your arm would probably fall asleep. And on the other one, you can have a tiny, whiny little Chihuahua. They're completely different. And this has occurred largely because of the unique breeding practices that we've taken towards dogs, as well as their reproductive capability. A single founder event with just a very few dogs can result through breeding and selection over some generations in a completely unique physiological variation compared to other canines. Of course, this is assisted by the fact that dogs are very good at being bred towards certain traits. Which is something we're not quite sure about why that's a thing. See, breeding is very straightforward from a from an overlying sense. However, the genetic factors involved don't necessarily always make sense. Sure, we you know we understand our genetic breeding. We we understand roughly dominant and recessive traits, but physical traits in dogs aren't necessarily that you know they're not physical or dominant or recessive traits. We're emphasizing certain physical traits and just breeding over generations and hoping that the ones don't bump it out. And yet we're able to establish dog breeds through just repeated re 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 rebreeding until we can basically create a baseline. Now this is something we can do with other animals, certainly, but dogs are just very good at it for some reason. It may be because we just have domesticated them for so long that just it's a thing that just came up where we've managed to breed them towards being very good at being bred. Perhaps more interestingly than their uniqueness in terms of their genetic relationship with us is their emotional relationship with us. Dogs have been companions with humankind for millennia now. One of the earliest skeletons of dogs we found was one from 24,000 BC in the Czech Republic. And we know for a fact that it definitely was a domesticated dog, not just because of its physical characteristics, but the fact that it was interred with a mammoth bone placed in its jaws. Now that's a very human behavior. That's a very modern human behavior. It feels very... It feels very typical. Humans have a remarkably close relationship with our companion animals. And that's a, something of a timeless thing. Especially when you keep in mind that this is... This isn't that much later after what we think is the earliest domestication events, at least from the fossil evidence thus far. 
It could very well be that we've had domesticated dogs for hundreds of thousands of years, from the earliest stretches of human development. Dogs passed with humans over the land bridge into North America. Dogs have spread with us to every inch and every foot of the world. And there's something kind of special, thinking about it, about an animal that's completely and utterly specialized to us. They're the human dog. They're almost inseparable from us as a species. We have a symbiotic relationship. Our two species are deeply intertwined at this point, and... In a sense, that means we're kind of a species altogether. At least from a societal standpoint. And that's something that's pretty neat.